Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know you just read a little bit about or just heard about who I am, but I have, before I make my speech, I would like to tell a little bit about why I'm also here. Uh, the Indian culture has been part of my life since I was a kid. In, in Somalia and in most of African countries, uh, Bollywood is more there than Hollywood. So I was introduced to Indian music and Indian films from the time I was a kid. And uh, I even remember I was like nine years old when I went to the first cinema. Uh, and actually, I was not given permission by my, my parents, but I still went to go to the cinemas, which was supposed to be for a little bit older kids than my age, and I was there. But I'm honored to be here today, and uh, I was wondering why was I invited? And it has been, uh, since uh, being in the spotlight, I have made so many speeches in so many years, but this speech was the one which took me the most time to prepare, and uh, I'm glad I'm brown color because you can see how nervous I am from my cheeks. So uh, I want to thank you for giving me this honor to be here. And uh, I want to remind everyone that we have gathered here today for one of the greatest human beings that have been alive. To me, Mr. Gandhi has made so, mu so much impact. Just his name, from the time I was a kid, I knew the name Gandhi meant greatness. And I wanted to know more about him. I'm also uh, honored to be invited and to be part of this grateful, and I'm very grateful for being here today to share uh, my views on this man that I had never met and who was born 110 years before I was, but then had very big impact on my life. Ladies and gentlemen, I live in one of the best countries in the world, and I'm glad, I'm very happy and honored and thankful for living in Finland, but I also remember uh, living in a world which was shattered in front of me as a kid. This was because of civil war. And as a kid, I didn't understand this. And what I found out that people were fighting for something they couldn't really do anything about. This was because they were born to a clan that they, can, they can't do anything about it. But still, all of a sudden, people were enemies with each other. With each, each other. As a kid, I also remember all the hatred between people that were just a couple of weeks ago talking to each other and being very friendly to one another. And I don't remember has hate ever in life accomplished anything because nothing worth remembering in this world today was accomplished by hatred. I was 12 years old when my teacher, uh, my English teacher, gave me uh, copies she took with, from her book for us to read because we were learning English language. And I was introduced to Gandhi when I was 12 years old. Uh, I didn't know him, I didn't know what he was about, but all I knew is that his words touched me in a way that no one else has ever touched me. And the words that touched me was how can people be hating on each other on things that they can't do anything about, the color of their skin, the clan they were born to, or the country they were in? So he laid this peace in my heart as a kid, and I found peace through reading his books and his, his story about his life. It laid the foundations, a good foundation for dealing with challenges I had yet to face in my life. So after my country was broken down, I got the possibility to be sent away. So I found, and I eventually, eventually, I managed to escape to safety and started building a new life surrounded by peace. But this hatred will not still leave me. I have never felt as hated as I felt in my new home here in Finland. This was in 1994. Once again, none of it None of this hate made any sense. Again, it was based on something that I personally could not do anything about it. This was because 
of the country I was born in. But this time I was older. But as often goes, I was not none wiser. I wanted to revenge. I was 15 years old. All the anxiety and the hate I felt I wanted to inflict to others. Because I was suffering, I wanted everyone else next to me to suffer. Again, the need or the help I needed came from the wise, of the wor the wise words of Mr. Gandhi. And you just saw on the film, an eye for an eye ends up making the whole world blind. This, this sentence really stopped me personally. As a 17 years old, 16 years old here in Finland, do I really want anyone to feel the way I feel right now? Can I, do I give this to others? I don't feel good, why will I want this for others? And it, turns, it turned out that that wasn't what I wanted. I read so many books as a kid to find peace, but Mr. Gandhi was the one who turned the lessons and I had to learn, that I had to learn and really put them into action. What he said was, you must be the change you wish to, be in, to see in the world. So I decided that I will be the change myself in order for the world to change. I'm almost 40 years old today. I'm a father of four. I must admit that there were lessons along the years I, had, I did not pay much attention to. My mom and my teachers will remind me of this as often. But that realization is one of the lessons that have stuck with me. The words, the change, that if I need to change things, they need to happen. I need to be that change. But like any father, I worry and fear for what the future has in store for my kids, my children. But unlike some fathers, I already know that my beautiful brown children will face so much hatred, so much discrimination, and so much belittling. Still, all these decades later, because of something they cannot do anything about, the color of their skin. But don't, don't be worried. I will teach them and I will make sure that they enter the world with their heads high, armed with the best knowledge that this country is offering. As you all know that Finland is one of the best countries to give education. And I know that I will also give them the wisdom who came and suffered and fought and triumphed before them. In Gandhi's words, nobody can hurt me without my permission. I will not let anyone to hurt me and I will encourage them, empower them, educate them, and give them a very good self-confidence for them not to let anyone else to hurt them. But one day I will be gone, just like all of us, and it's my children and their children's turn to instill these lessons into the next generation. And I hope and pray they too won't allow themselves to be hurt and that they will remember to live each day as one of the great Indians also taught me. He said, live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as you will live forever. Thank you for having me.